Stop using I'm a natural light photographer as an excuse. Hey, welcome to my channel, guys. I'm Daniel Norton, photographer in New York. If you don't know, uh, this channel is all about kind of my philosophy and my kind of experience as a photographer, a commercial photographer for many years. And we do some tutorials here as well. So if that interests you, please subscribe. So before you start throwing tomatoes, um, I just want to say that this is something I see quite a bit and, and I kind of want to address it a little bit. Um, I sometimes joke, I'm a natural light photographer, uh, because you do find people that, that, that they, they do one of two things with that phrase. They either wear it like a badge of honor, like I'm a natural light photographer, or they use it as an excuse for why they don't ever want to learn how to light something. No, no, I don't need lights. I, I, I'm not, not going to light. I'm, I'm a natural light photographer. It's, it's better. Well, the reality is, is that natural or available light or sunlight or whatever um, can be great. I mean, some might say it's the best light, right? The problem with this, like, holding back and refusing to use anything but natural light, in my mind, is that if you actually are promoting yourself as some kind of a professional photographer or some kind of a... Uh, a photographer that, that's going to get the job done, which is, you know, if you've watched my videos before, I talk about why do professional photographers get paid? They get paid to get the job done, right? And I got to tell you that if you cannot light something or refuse to light something, you will not be able to get every single job done all the time. It will end up being a problem. Because, you know, clients don't have the flexibility a lot of times that they, that they used to have. So, so back in the day, uh, you know, a lot of times, I mean, I when I first started as a photographer, I started, first of all, in Miami, and I was working as a photo assistant, and we shot a lot outside, right? We used the natural light. We used, uh, although we didn't just shoot natural, we used reflectors and stuff, which I'm assuming most natural light people also use. Um, the thing is, is that if, if, a, if a company, let's say they came from, you know, Europe, and they came to shoot a catalog on Miami Beach, and they wanted definitely to shoot outside, then what they would do is if the catalog was going to take, let's say, you know, three full days of shooting, they would literally book the photographer for like double that. Because then they would know that they got it. So if a day was bad and they couldn't, you know, shoot or you got less shots because it started raining, then they would get the shots, right? Now, budgets are much tighter. People don't want to deal with that. You're not going to get that. It's just not the way it normally is anymore unless it's a bigger uh, type client, like a very big client that has a very specific thing you're not going to get these extra days to deal with. You're going to have to shoot when they need you to shoot it. So if you're brought in to shoot, you know, uh, a, uh, a shot of somebody and the lighting is just bad, you know, you've got to be able to, to, to make it happen. And this doesn't mean that you need to be a master at lighting, but it does mean that you need to understand light. And in fact, if you really love natural light, then being really good at lighting is going to work for you a lot because you can reproduce it. And in fact, I just was talking to, to Paul, who's my studio mate, um, and he had an assignment to shoot a ballerina, a jumping, and they knew that he was in a daylight studio. You guys probably know I'm in a daylight studio. And, uh, you know, the art director or whatever said to him, I don't know, I wasn't there, but he was just kind of telling the story. Um, you know, oh, I want, I want you to shoot with the natural light in the studio. And, of course, Paul looked at it and he was like, yeah, it's bright in here, but you want to shoot a ballerina jumping, it's not that bright. You know, it's like you're not going to be able to freeze the action very good if, unless you want to crank the ISO really high, whatever. These are things that he knows, right? So he was already planning ahead. He's like, I'm going to have to use flash, you know, and kind of mix it and make it when we we're talking about that. Um, and it turns out in the end, when they came down to do the shoot and the ballerina was in the town for the day and they went to the thing, it was actually raining. So there was no light in there. And if he had actually wanted to shoot with natural light anyways, he would have had to crank the... You know, on a good bright day, you would have to crank the ISO probably up to like 1200, 1600 just to get, you know, enough shutter speed to, to stop the dancer. On a ringy day in there, it ain't happening. You know, it was probably like he would have had to crank it super high and it would not have been acceptable. I don't care what these reviewers tell you that these cameras are good up to 87 billion ISO. No, they're not. You're shooting for a magazine, they don't want some super noisy, you know, image and it will be super noisy. I don't care what camera you have uh, at really high ISOs. When they talk about usable at a high ISO, they're really talking about, yeah, you're a photojournalist and you have to get the shot. Not that you should run around shooting at that ISO. Anyways, that's a that's a whole other video, I guess. But he had planned, and he knew he was going to use Flash anyways. You know, what I guess his plan was when the client got there, he was going to kind of mix it and show them how good it was. And he basically shot it all with Flash, no, not mixing any available light. 
and it looked like the studio was daylight because he's an experienced photographer that's been doing this a hell of a lot longer than me and he made it look fantastic right and I doubt the magazine will be out by the time this video comes out but if at some point in the future I'll put a, a link to the cover in the comments you know basically he created natural light look with flash which is basically um, the excuse that a lot of natural light people use I don't like the look of flash what exactly do you mean by that? The look of flash? I guarantee you that a good photographer, one that's trained with flash, can light something up and make you think it was a window. Because that's what you should be doing with flash. Flash shouldn't look like flash. If you can ever, unless, I mean, this is very specific. Like, let's say you're doing a shot with like a, you know, a spotlight and you want it to look like a spotlight shot, whatever. Those are very particular things. But generally speaking, when you're shooting something, people shouldn't be able to identify the you know general people looking at it shouldn't be able to identify what you shot it with they shouldn't be like oh yeah that's a beauty dish like if it's that obvious that it's a beauty dish then you're doing something wrong like you should be lighting stuff in a way that uh you know feels right like when somebody's looking at a photo they shouldn't be thinking about the lighting because the lighting should work right um even if it's crazy lighting if it's lighting that just lights up part of their face if the feeling and the the the, the idea and the concept of the the image is good enough, people are going to just feel like that light is correct. And because it's correct, they won't be thinking about it. They won't be like, hmm, I wonder if that's a speed light. Nobody's going to do that, you know. I mean, photographers do that because we're trying to dissect everything. But I mean, your average viewer looking at things. So this, like, excuse that, like, natural light is just better looking, that just means that you're not learning, you know, to use your tools correctly. And basically, what it means to me is that you're lazy. You know, I'm sorry. You can learn to use Flash. It's very easy uh, nowadays with TTL and all these other things. So it's not like you need to be this like master genius to be able to work out how to light something. And knowing how to do it is going to elevate your work so much. So much. Right? And I'm not talking about these guys that go out there with their high-speed sync and their super shallow depth of field and the giant soft boxes and strobe against the thing and make the sky dark. Yeah, whatever. I mean people that can go out there and shoot something and it's lit and you're just looking at it and you're just like, you don't know it's lit. That's the skill that you want to get if you want to be a natural light shooter and still be able to achieve what your client wants all the time. And what it kind of means is that you have to think, and again, you don't have to like sit there with a notebook and I mean, just be aware. Like when you're in light, like if you're a natural light shooter, you like to shoot natural light, you, you gravitate towards certain things, look at those things and figure out why is it that I like to shoot, you know, under this tree or next to this wall or when the sun's at this point in the sky. And you'll start to understand how light works. And once you understand how light actually works, then it's easy enough to recreate it, right? You know that the sun does this, which means that if you want it to look like the sun, you got to light it a certain way, right? You, you know that you know, when you put somebody in the shade of a building, it kind of looks like this because the bounce light or whatever, it has this feel to it. Right. You can create that. You can create that light yourself. And it will look natural and it will feel natural. And then you'll bring yourself to this next level. You know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't shoot natural light. Uh, not by any means. Or that photographers that shoot natural light are bad. What I am saying is that if you turn it into an excuse or some kind of like, uh, you know, mantra where like you have to do oh, I am a natural like so was, okay so am I guess what I can use flash most pros can use flash and constant lights and make really great shots with that stuff and we can also shoot in really pretty daylight because anybody can do that you know that part of it is not hard you know it, assuming that you're good at posing and you're good at interacting with your subject you're good at composition you know if they're in nice light I mean who couldn't make that shot right so what separates you from just anybody else with a good eye? Not a whole heck of a lot. So when it comes down to it, knowing how to control light, whether it be uh, artificial light as in uh, you know flashes or artificial light as in like constant artificial lights, that's going to change your ability level, your level as a photographer to be able to bring you into a spot where you can do more and better jobs, right? Because you're not relying on oh my God, I have to have the perfect light or else I can't do anything, right? What you're really doing is creating the light, capturing the light that you want, 
no matter the situation. And if you show up and the light is perfect and you can shoot natural light, go for it. I mean, I do it all the time. Can't tell you the number of times that like I've set up lights and ended up just using the natural light because it was great. But I had the lights ready just in case. And because when my client needs something to look a certain way, I need to be able to pull that off. And that is what is going to make you, you know, ultimately like a professional in that level, forgetting about money wise, but a pro in, in the sense of like delivering and getting work and, you know, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I know I felt like I kind of came into this a little bit bashing, a little ranting, but I, I just want to say that like, yeah, there's tons of great shots that people do uh, with just natural light. Um, and I think it's great if you can master natural light and it's definitely a skill. Uh, but I think what you really want to do is look beyond that. Don't use it as a crutch or as an excuse to not be able to get certain shots. Don't say you don't like the way certain things look when making some generalized statement. I don't like the look of flash because not all flash looks the same. And I guarantee you, like I said, that you wouldn't be able to tell what was flashed, what wasn't flashed if it's a good photographer who's, that knows how to work that equipment. So that's where you should be, right? What you want to do is look at something and be like, wow, I want to be able to create the light that I love and not just be a victim or a slave to it, you know, basically be like, oh, well, the light's like this today, that's how I have to shoot. Well, you know what? What if I don't want to shoot like that? What if I want to shoot a different way? What if it's a cloudy day and I want punchy sunlight? What if I want to make it look like it's sunny but it's actually cloudy? I can do that with flash. And with kind of it being creative, I can make the viewer feel like that it's real, you know, because I understand how light works. And that's what, what you should achieve, you know, as a photographer. You want to understand how light works. And once you can do that, you can use and control and manipulate and really, really be, you know, the, the, the one pushing forward the shot and not the one just like taking it, you know, reactive uh, work versus, uh, you know, proactive, as I would say. Anyways, uh, let me know, uh, all you natural light photographers, how much you hate me now, but no, uh, seriously, like, do you guys work in natural light a lot? Do you like to mix it? You know, d did you, did you, uh, do you ever find times where, like, you just can't get the shot and, and you'd like to know more about flash and, like, what, what really holds you back? Because, I mean, I know I'm generalizing saying, saying that it's easy to fix it, but if you are a natural light photographer and you want to move forward and learn more stuff about flash and stuff, let me know what stuff you feel is really difficult and I will talk about it and I will demo it and I will show you how to make flash or any other kind of uh, constant light source look the way that you want it to look. So I want everybody to grow and, and get better and, and basically, uh, you know, be the best photographer they can be. Use natural light, use artificial light, use any light you can. So if you haven't already, please subscribe um, and I'll see you next time.